Good evening and welcome to the gathering place. And as you can see, we're not in Simi Valley tonight, but we will be there shortly. We're in Columbia Falls, Montana with David and Michael. And um, saying, Bob, why aren't you there? Well, we had a kind of emergency. David needed an emergency driver because the one that was supposed to help him backed out. So here I am. And um, so we're having a good time here. And there's some, there's some things that uh, have been on Rodney's heart about prayer that are awesome. And I really believe that tonight they're going to go deep into your heart as the Holy Spirit has been driving us toward righteousness. One of the things that we touched on last week was how that the Holy Spirit and righteousness work hand in hand. So Rodney's going to give you a little bit different perspective and some testimonies to build your faith in praying in the Holy Ghost. And as you speak in tongues, what it does for you. But I wanted to greet everybody. I wanted to say hi. And I wanted to say uh, a very happy birthday to Jay Lennon. It's her birthday this Friday. He says, I won't be here uh, for it. I want to say happy birthday, Jay. <laughs> and so at this time, at this time, on behalf of myself, David and Michael, I want to say God bless you. And I'm, I'm actually very excited. Rodney Johnson is somebody I've known him for years and years. He is so spiritually consistent, always seeking God, always learning, always walking further in the Spirit, always growing. And I just find that amazing. It's one thing if you do it for a month or two, but if you do it year after year after year, there's something really incredible about that. He carries an impartation, and I know he's going to give it to you tonight. So with that, I introduce my, my dear friend, Rodney Johnson. Have an amazing meeting, and God bless you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Bob is right. Some of you know this, others don't. But we go back to when our boys, who are now 37 years old, uh, played baseball together in high school. <laughs> and so we've known each other a long, long time. David and my son RJ played baseball and football together. And so once I started coming to this church and Bob got to know me a little better, he's like, I always thought you were a good Baptist boy. <laughs> and actually, I was. I, <laughs> I grew up in, in a Southern Baptist church. and so. Uh, but it was during that time, when I was a junior in high school, that I was involved in Kansas City Youth for Christ, and I needed to make a, a decision. And so I went to my Youth for Christ leader, and I said, um, I've got this decision. I can either go on tour with the singing group here at Youth for Christ, or I can go to a music camp that I've saved up my money from last summer to go to. And she just says, you need the Holy Spirit. I said, okay. <laughs> What's that? I, I, mean, I knew what the Holy Spirit was, but she says, no, you need the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And that has made all the difference in the world to me. And we'll get into that more tonight, but I just wanted to prime the pump here to say, oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We sing a song, come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome with your presence, Lord. That's what we want. Holy Spirit, come, overflow us now. I'm doing a Bible study with my cousin, and it grew out of the fact that his son, just his wife, his son's wife just had a baby and was born premature, 28 weeks. So there's a lot of complications, and so he reached out to my sister and me for prayer, and he said, um, "We, you know, we really need to." Uh, you know, pray this young little, young little boy through because he's going to be in the intensive care unit until the end of July. And so my sister, being very bold, she says, well, do you pray in the spirit? Do you pray in tongues over him? He says, well, n not sure about that. So no, he, he said he hadn't, but he was interested in learning more. So we are doing, he and I are doing a Bible study together online, and it's called uh, about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to read to you the very first paragraph uh, from today's devotion that was in that. So I'm going to put this on. 
It says, in this day and age, we need the truth in the worst sort of way. The current mantra seems to be, don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is made up. A lot of erroneous teachings are out there, and people just soak them up. Information is coming at us faster than ever before. The problem is, we don't need more information. What we need is more truth. And who better to reveal truth than the spirit of truth? Jesus said, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. That's John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit authored the scriptures. He inspired them. He illuminates and shines on them the light of understanding. This is why people who are not born again and do not have the Holy Spirit inside can read the Bible and get nothing, or worse, come up with some strange doctrine. The Holy Spirit in us is the it factor. And that was the first paragraph in this morning's devotional. That was written by Jonathan Stockstill. And I thought, what a great place to start here. We need the Holy Spirit. Well, who is the Holy Spirit? It just said right there, he's the spirit of truth. Now, we hear a lot these days about, you know, speaking your truth, you know, my truth, my truth. Well, you know, there's, I guess, you know, people have their truth, but Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the, and there's some s sort of new agey teachings out there that say, well, you know, all paths lead to God. And what I would do with that, I would say, I would try to find common ground with them. I would say, you know what? That is true. There's some truth in all the different world religions. But yet, in your path, whatever you choose, whether it be Buddhism or Hinduism or whatever path you might choose, eventually that road that you're on is going to bring you to a crossroad. Roads. And what you do with the cross is going to make a difference, is going to make the difference on finding God and finding his plan for your life. So if you're going off and you're chanting and you're doing all this other kind of stuff, eventually you're going to come to a crossroads and the Holy Spirit is going to meet you there and he says, hey, look at the cross. Look at the cross. Because that's where Jesus took his, his hand up to God and his hand down to us. And now he can bring us together. So it's not my truth. Um, but he points us to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And then shining that light on all roads lead to God. Because eventually the road's going to take you to a crossroads. Uh, someone said the other, other day, I heard him say this, that the Holy Spirit is like a power source. See, when we receive Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit. He's in there, you know. I'm, when I talk to people about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm not saying you don't have the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, you do. What you don't have yet is maybe the power that you need. Jesus says, wait he told the disciples, wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Because he knew that the things that they were going to face, they couldn't face it on their own. They needed that indwelling of the Holy Spirit because he's the power source. So it's like having, a, say you've got, now I'm going to go old school here. Say you've got a record player. You got, Guys, remember what a record player is? Okay, say, say, and you put a, put that thirty three RPM on there, and and you and you put the little needle on it, and you drop it there, and nothing. Why? Because it's not plugged in. But if you plug it in, and you turn it on, now all of a sudden you're plugged into the power source, and you can have some beautiful music coming out of that. So. Those of you that young people that are, might be watching online right now, yeah, there was such a thing as a, a, a turntable record player, all right? <laughs> and, but we need to get plugged in so that the song of the Spirit can come out of us. The song of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is our power source. When we're plugged into him, he's going to then uh, release God's song. You know, 
I've been doing some studying about DNA, and it's really interesting because uh, scientists tell us this, that DNA actually has a sound. There's a sound and a frequency within our DNA. Thank you. <laughs> and each, each one of us, it's, it's a unique sound just to us. So Nora, the sound in your DNA is going to be different than the sound in mine because God's got a, a sound. And, you know, one of the sons of our congregation here is Dr. Barry Linhart. And he's got a website called Forerunner dot com yeah forerunner sound excuse me forerunner sound dot com and he has said god doesn't do anything in the earth until he first releases a sound so let's go back to the very beginning it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth but he was hovering over the feasts of the deep he was vibrating he was making a sound and then he said light be and there was light so the sound came first. And you know what? I think that's really interesting because when the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost, what had happened first? A sound was released. It says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And then it filled the entire house where they were, were staying. And it, it was so loud and so who knows what it, it sounded like to them but it caused all the people in Jerusalem to come running like, oh my goodness what is going on here and then what did they hear they heard more sounds they heard sound coming out of their mouth because sound God said light be and then he gave us the power to create as well but sometimes we get so messed up because our minds have not been, been transformed by the renewing of our mind that that we get all of these things coming in like you know <laughs> and and it shuts out the sound that God wants to release in us so I think that's why he actually released the gift of tongues to everyone so that it bypassed their mind and they could see. Now, what were they doing? What were they saying? Well, the people that came there, those Parthians, the Medes, the Elamites, and all those people, they said, how is it we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God? So when we pray in the Spirit, we can, well, not can, we are, praying the wonderful works of God I was have you ever heard the term a cessationist okay a cessationist is someone who believes that the gifts of the spirit ceased they they stopped uh, with the giving of the Bible and stuff and that we don't need them anymore and um, I was reading about it this afternoon and the guy who was making a case for cessationism said, well, you know, if we needed, uh, if, if tongues were still for today, then why do missionaries go to language school and learn the language? Well, I would point him back to Acts chapter 2 where it says, we hear them speaking the wonderful works of God. They were speaking to God. Yeah. Now, we've had some experiences right here in our services. Uh, Pastor Bob, has, was one time we were in the 6 o'clock hour, was praying in the Spirit, and it, all of a sudden his tongue changed to a different language. And Michael's mother, Elizabeth, all of a sudden she started picking up some words because she speaks, is it Aramaic? Was that what? Yeah, she speaks Aramaic. And so she later came to Bob and told him, said, hey, you were speaking Aramaic at that one time, and I picked up these words. One of them I remember was righteousness, because Bob has been teaching about righteousness, but now here the Spirit was praying through him about righteousness and stuff. So, um, but it in in most instances though, uh, the 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 speaking in tongues is to pray to God. So a missionary would go to language school because. He needs to learn the language so he can talk to them in their own language. But anyway, a cessationist is one who believes it's not for today. And I used to feel 
sometimes a little angry, especially toward the p- preachers that you know would preach against it and stuff. But I've been tempered now, and now uh, <laughs> I have been tempered. Yes, uh, my temper has been tempered, and <laughs> and I actually feel sorry for them that that they can't experience the joy and the and the and the glory that comes when we give ourselves to praying in the spirit I and mean, there's so much wonderful things that that happen to us uh, when we do that when we give ourselves to that um, so i want to read to you uh, acts chapter 19 so we know in acts chapter 2 that was when the holy spirit was first given here's another example in acts chapter 19 and this is um, uh, Paul. So he was traveling uh, in the region. So here's what, what Luke, the writer of Acts, said. While Apollos was ministering Corinth, Paul traveled on through the regions of Turkey until he arrived in Ephesus, where he found a group of 12 followers of Jesus. The first thing he asked them was, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? No, they replied, we have not even heard of a Holy Spirit. Paul asked, then what was the meaning of your baptism? And they responded, it meant that we would follow John's teaching. So we're talking about John the baptizer, John the Baptist, John the immerser. John's baptism was for those who were turning from their sins, and he taught you to believe in and follow the one who was coming after him, Jesus, the anointed one. When they understood this, they were baptized into the authority of Jesus, the anointed one. And when Paul laid his hands on each of the twelve, the Holy Spirit manifested, and they immediately spoke in tongues and prophesied. So it's a boom. There's that power source again. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, my son and his wife and my grandson were all baptized. And I told my grandson, I said, when you're baptized, you're identifying with Jesus it's death when you go under the water and when you come up you're identifying with his resurrection and the newness of power I said when Jesus was baptized it says that the heavens were open to him and it was after that that he began his ministry so I told my grandson I said you can expect the heavens to open to you as you are being baptized because now you've identified with Jesus death but also now with his resurrection and and part of that is then the Holy Spirit coming alongside to help. In fact, uh, the divine paraclete, paraclete means the one called alongside to help, which is the Greek term for the word Holy Spirit, the paraclete. So anyway, I want to read to you now 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 15 through 19. So Paul is talking about... Um, praying in the spirit and he says so here's what I've concluded I'll pray in the spirit but I'll also pray with my mind engaged this is the passion translation I'm reading right now I'll pray with my mind engaged I will sing rapturous praises in the spirit but I'll also sing with my mind engaged otherwise if you're praising God in your spirit how could someone without the gift participate by adding his amen to your giving of thanks since he doesn't have a clue what you're saying. Again, that's why we learned the language to the people that we're being sent to, <laughs> okay? Um, he says, but uh, your praise to God is admirable, but it does nothing to strengthen and build up others. I give thanks to God that I speak in tongues more than you all. But in the church setting, I would rather speak five words that can be understood than 10,000 exotic words in a tongue. That way, I could have a role in teaching others. Now, what he's talking about right here is the gift of tongues and interpretation. What happened on the day of Pentecost, they were given, uh, yes, it was a gift, but it was also a devotional thing. But it says they were praising God. They were speaking the wonderful works of God. And we're going to get into here the benefits of of praying in the spirit and how in a, from a devotional standpoint it can increase our intimacy with the father and with Jesus so i want to give you a couple of my benefits to praying in tongues in a devotional setting and then we're going to go to some of my friends who responded to my request today 
first off is it purifies and cleanses you inwardly. Uh, on John, John 7, 37 through 38, it says, Then on the most important day of the feast, the last day, Jesus stood and shouted out to the crowds, All you thirsty ones, come to me, come and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. There was a time, and I remember the year that it happened because we were living in this one house and we only lived there for a year. So the year was 1988. It was the year that my first daughter was born. And we were uh, uh, living in Granada Hills and I felt prompted to give extended times to praying in the spirit, to praying in tongues. And when I say extended, I, this group right here probably won't mean anything to you because our pastor pre prays in tongues eight, nine hours a day. But for, for me, it was, it was extended. It was four hours. And I remember as I wound down to the end of that fourth hour, I felt so clean inside. So why is it? Because it says out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Well, what does water do? Well, if it's flowing, it cleanses it. You know, it gets rid of all of it. So that for me, that was the first benefit to me of praying in tongues was that I felt so cleansed. I felt so clean. Um, then it also builds you up on the inside. This is in Jude uh, 20. He says, but you, my delightfully loved friends, constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the spirit. Years ago, I, I wrote a song. It goes, building up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, building up <laughs> on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit knows the mind of God, and He knows our every need. So lift your voice, speak praise to God in languages unlearned, and you be building up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit building up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit so you're welcome to sing that at home <laughs> if you want to but it, it does it builds you up here was another one for us it says he prays through us when we don't know how to pray Romans 8.26 says, In a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading with God with emotional sighs too deep for words. Now, some translations call that groaning. And Bob has talked about that before, but sometimes you can pray so much in the spirit that all of a sudden the spirit takes over and there's groanings and generally he said that when that happens there's about breakthrough that's about to happen the groaning of that well here when it says he super intercedes it says the greek word i'm not even going to attempt to try to say it it's like hyper rento do gagana whatever <laughs> it's best translated super or hyper intercede for us and the footnote in the Passion Translation says, we can only imagine how many blessings have been poured into our lives because of the hyper intercession the Holy Spirit has prayed for us. And that was, I, and I got to thinking about that. Um, when I started in real estate, I was in an office in Chatsworth, and about, about the first year, somewhere toward the end of the first year, I... Uh, I went into the office one morning and I was walking in there. All of a sudden, we hear a big crash up above. We're on the bottom floor and it's a two-story building. And I hear a crash and all of a sudden, I see something break through the, the ceiling. And all of a sudden, a 
big beam, like those big beams up here, just comes crashing down and it's smashed on a desk. Had anyone been sitting there, they would have been very injured, fatally probably, you know, depending on where they hit him. And all of a sudden we just all got up and ran out of the, there because we didn't know if the whole building was going to collapse on us or something. And um, we were out of that building for eight months then because it took so much to repair it. And uh, what we found out later was that water had gotten into that second floor and it had weakened the, the beams and they, all of a sudden they'd snapped because there was heavy um, things, furniture or whatever above and it snapped and boom, it came down and crashed into our office space. And so later on, um, I said, Lord, thank you for sparing us. And he said, I spared it because you prayed. I said, Lord, I, I did pray this morning, but I did not pray for safety for our office building. I did not pray that. I know I didn't. <laughs> he says, you prayed in the spirit, didn't you? And I said, yes, I did. He said, you were praying that no one would be injured. Yeah. So I sent to my good friends um, a request because they both pray in the tongues a lot. And I said, tell me what you think are the benefits that you've personally experienced by praying in tongues. So I sent one to my friend Greg, and he was busy helping his wife do something. He says, here, answer for Rodney. So this was even better because she gave me way better examples than I'm sure he would have. <laughs> well, actually, I, I shouldn't say that. She gave me ones that were typed out. You know, she was a secretary for years. And so anyway, here's what she said. These were the experiential benefits of the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. She says, the first thing is, is the knowledge that my spirit is in touch with the Holy Spirit to pray for the need at hand. Now, I pray for my adult children, their spouses, and now we're starting to get grandchildren. I'm praying for them. And I pray for the children that we are dorm parents for at the, the Christian boarding school that we're at. Here's how I pray. I'll say, Holy Spirit, pray through me now for RJ, Jenny, O'Sheas, and Olivia. Pray th through me for Dan, Emily, and their new baby, Grant Justice. Pray through me for Kelly and Blake and for their future children. And pray for me now for all of the dorm children that we have. And then, boom, I start praying in tongues. I'll say, Shadabakata now, I don't normally pray that, but what I just did, that when I have that type of tongue, it usually means there's some sort of warfare that's going on. There's warfare happening. So I don't know which one of my children or grandchildren or the kids in the dorm that are now gone for the summer, what they might be facing but I've asked the Holy Spirit to pray through me, and I'm confident that he is praying right now in the perfect will of God. Next thing Terry said is that the benefit is intercession for matter when I don't know how to pray for it in English. And uh, I mean, that's an example right there. I, you know, I didn't necessarily know, especially the the young people that are traveling internationally, a lot of them are tra traveling to China and then to Ukraine and to Spain and to uh, Conga and all over around the world. Who knows what they're facing right now? But the Holy Spirit does, and we're covering them in prayer for that. Here's something that she said also. She, said, no, uh, she says, noting that I can pray in my mind in tongues when it's not appropriate to pray out loud. You know, like if you were uh, walking into a, a PTA meeting, it would probably not be a good idea to stand up and start <laughs> delivering a message in tongues. But you could do that quietly in your mind. And I, I've done that on numerous occasions. I just sit there and I, 
and I'm hearing <laughs> in my mind what the Spirit is praying. Um, here's another one she said, knowing that I'm doing spiritual warfare when laying hands on a particular location or an item. So sometimes there could be, um, well, I mean, we've prayed here at church sometimes for the state of California, you know, and we'll extend our hands in, in blessing, but we'll also pray in the spirit for the state of California or for our nation because there's so many things going on in our nation right now that it's just causing all sorts of confusion. But instead, if we pray in the Holy Spirit, he's going to pray according to the perfect will of God. Here's another thing. She says, knowing his spirit is flowing from my spirit to change the atmosphere in a room. We sing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. And then we begin praying in the Spirit, and it will change the atmosphere. One time, uh, we were apartment managers years ago when my son was one year old, newborn, actually. We were apartment managers. And we would pray through that uh, apartment in the Spirit. And one time we went away for a weekend or something. We took our baby, and we had a young man house set for us. And when we came back, he says, there's something different about this. The, the atmosphere is charged, you know, that, you know, I just sense peace. I sense, I don't remember all that he said. Um, but um, I just recently closed a, a, a very large transaction. And that was the testimony of the owner. She said, people walk on his property and they sense God's peace. Well, she prays in the spirit as she's walking when she's working in the garden and everything else. And people sense that. So praying in the spirit can change the atmosphere. She says that she sometimes will ask for a general interpretation of what she's been praying. She said it's not the same as a tongues and interpretation, just a sense of partnering during a private time of prayer. I remember years ago uh, hearing a a teaching about praying in the spirit and the the teacher said if you've got a job interview pray in the spirit on the way there and then when you get there ask him for the interpretation and so I thought that's interesting as a real estate broker I get I go on job interviews all the time it's like will you list your home with me <laughs> or not it's, it's a job interview and so I got a call from a friend of mine from church and she said hey my sister and I inherited our mother's house and we've interviewed seven agents and my sister's very difficult to deal with and I don't th I'm, I don't know why I'm calling you because uh, <laughs> you probably don't want to deal with her <laughs> because she's very difficult I said I'll come I'll, I'll talk to him I said I won't take any offense I you, our friendship is fine so no matter what happens our friendship is fine so on the way there I prayed in the Holy Spirit. And when I got there, this woman, and her husband was there. He was equally difficult. Um, <laughs> he was. <laughs> all of a sudden, I didn't get a, thus saith the Lord, nothing at all, nothing, nothing, nothing like that. But the Holy Spirit would prompt me to say something, and they would laugh, and would say something else, and they would laugh, and I had them laughing. And I walked out with a listing. Now, a week later, they were mad at me, and they were ready to cancel the <laughs> listing. <laughs> so what did I do? I prayed in the Holy Spirit <laughs> on the way there, and, and I said, give me the interpretation of how we partnered together for this meeting. I walked out. They were happy to keep the listing with me. So, so yeah, so sometimes we can say, Holy Spirit, what are we praying about here? And he'll give you uh, an insight into that. And if you've got a job interview, pray in the spirit on the way there. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
Um, then she said, during extended prayer in tongues, usually there's a sense of God's thick presence, sometimes a warmth or a glowing atmosphere. Some of you, I'm seeing some heads nodding around here. I'm, I'm taking it that some of you have experienced that same thing, that just the thickness of God's presence there. Uh, she says another benefit is that sometimes revelation or insight or wisdom or knowing answers to, to come to perplexing situations. I have another real estate story about <laughs> that got solved by praying in tongues. Uh, I had a listing that... Uh, we sold it to this um, buyer and he took forever and ever and ever to get loan approval and the seller finally had had it and he said okay he has until monday at three o'clock to get loan approval or or we're done no actually to close it he has it till monday to get to close it or we're done and um so monday at three o'clock came and it was done I, he it's, he says it's been nice working with you, but we're over this. So uh, darn it, I worked so hard on this. <laughs> uh, the next day, I get a call from my title rep, and she says the transaction has funded, and this is in Ventura County, and they do special recordings. It's going on. It's going to be recorded special. So I call the owner, and he says. You got to talk to my wife. He says, uh, she's, she's mad. She's, she's not. So anyway, I call the wife and she's like, nope, we're done. We're over it. And I said, well, here's what's happened. The loan funded today and it's actually going to record today. She's like, nope, I'm, we're done. We're not doing it. I said, well, here's what's going to happen. We can't recall it. So the buyer's going to find out that it closed and you're saying, no, we're not moving out. And so you're going to have to, you'll, they'll probably file a lawsuit against you uh, for, and sue you for specific performance since they actually performed. Uh, she's like, nope. And she's, she didn't care. So I'm like, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> and so uh, I went and told my escrow officer, and she's like, ah, you know. See all this hair that's missing? Yeah, they got pulled out then. <laughs> so that night, Valerie and I, we partnered together and we prayed in the Spirit. And as we were praying in the Spirit, I saw a picture over the house, and it was like a whirlwind over the house. And the wife, I could see her, her nails were just like pulling in there and she was like digging in like, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go. And then all of a sudden, it just lifted. I got, okay. So um, we went to sleep and I thought, okay, it's done. And in, in the sleep, I had a dream. And the dream was is that the seller didn't know this, but they had actually signed a release saying it was okay to close on Tuesday and not Monday. So the next morning, it's Wednesday, and it, it was a holiday, so everything's closed. Um, but the escrow officer came in that day, and, and I went through looking through everything, looking through all the papers that he had signed. I couldn't find a single paper that he had signed that said, hey, it's okay to, to close this. And that afternoon, the um, the escrow officer came in, and I said, you know, I've been looking, trying to find something. He says, oh, yeah. I sent him the estimated closing statement, and the closing was to close on Tuesday, not Monday. So he had signed it. He had agreed to it. So I called him, and I said, I need to meet with you tomorrow morning in person. I don't want to do this over the phone, but I need to meet with you in person. And I, was, I went in to tell him one of three things is going to happen. The first thing is your, your house is sold. You're living in someone else's house right now. Um, so you either need to move or two, you need to prepare for a lawsuit. <laughs> I don't remember now what the third one was. But when I, when I got in there and I said, uh, so I said three things are going to happen. I said, uh, your house is sold. 
And he says, oh, well, I guess we better move then. <laughs> so I didn't have to go to number two or three. <laughs> but we were praying in the spirit and something lifted in her, in her heart and her emotions or whatever because he told me then after the fact he says I'm not going to say her name but he said she told me she says Rodney's going to sell our house today isn't he and he goes yeah <laughs> so something had changed in her heart but it was because we prayed in the spirit you know because I didn't know how to pray I didn't yeah so anyway thank you Holy Spirit for yeah yeah also, going back to my friends, her, uh, one of the benefits she had was a sense of agreement with many around the world in the body of Christ who are praying maybe for a tragedy at the same moment, you know, maybe like the shooting in Uvalde, Texas uh, a week or so ago, or whatever it may be. Sometimes when there's a tragedy, those who pray in the spirit, there's that sense of agreement because we're praying in the perfect will of God about something like that. And then the last thing she said was comfort during times of pressure, anger, confusion, or hopelessness. I mean, I was feeling such pressure over that transaction because I thought, I'm going to be named in a lawsuit too, you know, because we let this close and <laughs> the seller told us not to let it close. But things changed. So now I want to read to you some thoughts from my other friend, Myrene, some of you who remember her she used to come uh, to church here until she moved to uh, Arizona here's what she says the most impacting consequence of hundreds of hours of praying in the spirit over the years is that I have changed dramatically I'm not especially trying to change but first Corinthians 14 4 tells me that I will be edified when I pray in tongues so she's recognizing from these hundreds of hours over the years that now she's being built up and she's being changed. She also said, I'm being strengthened by the Holy Spirit as I pray in tongues. Here's the third thing she said. She says, weakness and propensity toward choosing sin is not as large of a problem as in earlier times the more that I pray in tongues. She said, at the same time he is washing sin choices away from me, he's joining me to himself. Yeah, and that's why I said, you know, the first time I prayed in tongues for four hours straight, there was that cleansing that would just, you know, I felt uh, joined to, to, to God and, and, and that cleansing. Um, fourth thing she said is, I love him more and I think about him more often. It's a free flow of both thanksgiving and back and forth communication comes more easily. I still believe that when we pray in tongues and finish, we should pray in tongues some more. <laughs> it is right. She says, I try to have my spiritual language running silently inside me while I am in the supermarket or getting dressed or doing dishes or sitting across from another person, listening carefully to the other person speak. It becomes effortless. Many times it ushers me into being in two realms at one time. I've had that happen to me when I'm sitting right over here at the piano. I will be leading and I'm singing the song and I see all of you out here. Yet at the same time, I'm seeing into the spirit. I'm seeing what's happening like even beyond that wall. I'm seeing it two realms at the same time. And, and that comes... That sensitivity to the Spirit comes, I believe, from having prayed in the Spirit more and more. Well, at least that's what Myrene says, and I, I found it to be true in my life as well. She says, my personal relationship with Jesus is far more intimate than ever because of many hundreds of hours throughout the decades of praying in tongues. I mean, what a great testimony. Decades, decades. Amen. You know, when I was received the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was 17 years old. And I, I'm 63 now, so do the math. What's that, 46 years <laughs> that I've, I've had? So I've had more than four decades of praying in the Spirit. Um, she says, my awareness of the angelic realm increases. And I can testify to that as well. I remember one time I was traveling up 
Topanga Canyon heading toward the 118 freeway. And I'd been praying in the spirit. Um, I typically do that a lot when I'm driving around. And all of a sudden I look over and up on top of the mountain there was a very large angel. And he says, command me to release the flood. And I had been taught we don't talk to angels and we don't command them to do anything. And so I'm like, no, I'm, <laughs> we're not supposed to talk to you. I'm not supposed to talk to you. <laughs> and by then I was at uh, Santa Susana Pass Road. So I turned left there and I drove on. And I, kept, and I could still see him standing up on top of that mountain. And he says, command me to release the flood. And I'm like, no. <laughs> And so I pulled off, there's a townhouse complex there, and so I stopped, and I turned and looked at him, and he said it again, command me to release the flood. And so I, I pointed to him, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to release the flood. And I said, God, you need to show me in scripture if what I just did is of you or if, if I was totally missing it. And immediately, the scripture came to my mind. When the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Now, so all of a sudden, I just began sensing over the next few days, uh, as I was driving around praying, in the spirit, I could sense water in the spirit filling up. Um, you know, at one time, Chatsworth was labeled the porn capital of the world. And during times of intercession with other friends and, and people in our church and stuff, we would pray about that. And all of a sudden, um, the city of Los Angeles City Council passed a law. I'm not going to say what it is because it's, it's, it's inappropriate for me to say what it was. But bottom line it drove the porn industry out of Los Angeles. And Chatsworth is no longer the porn capital of the world. And so I believe that part of that came because there were people, not just me, but a lot of people were praying, praying in the spirit. And that was a warfare type of, of praying, yeah. Here's the second to last thing Myrene said. She says, but most of all, there is more love in my heart and there's been at earlier times, he quietly works to make us more of a reflection of his love. This is so that others can know him through God's love in us. I sometimes refer to my wife Valerie as, as the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and it's, Bev, you're probably the Holy Spirit to Nathan. <laughs> Sharon, you're probably the Holy Spirit to Tom. <laughs> and, uh, and some of the things that she said says to me at times, she'll say, that wasn't very loving, what I said. <laughs> yeah, Nathan's shaking his head, yes. That wasn't very loving, you know. And and so, Valerie, if you're watching this, thank you <laughs> for making me sensitize more to the Holy Spirit and to the love. Uh, the last thing Myrene said is, love is is the main blessing of praying in tongues. And it really is. Yeah, it is. So why did God choose the speaking in tongues as the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit? I think so that it could bypass our mind. It could bypass our prejudices. It could bypass everything so that we could hear the sound from heaven and then be changed by it. Um, there are some people that are watching right now that I believe are wanting to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have that evidence of speaking in tongues. Um, when I was filled for the first time, I had never heard anyone pray in tongues before. Never had. As I start off by saying, Bob thought I was a good Southern Baptist. I was. And I, <laughs> I had never heard anyone pray in tongues. Although I didn't know it at the time, but my pastor was spirit-filled and he prayed in tongues. He just didn't tell anybody because <laughs> uh, probably didn't want to lose his job. But, <laughs> uh, but 
the first time that I heard anyone speak in tongues, it was me. And so after that lady from the Kansas City Youth for Christ, she says, this is how you do it. She says, Jesus Christ is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. So you ask him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And then you speak. But you don't speak in English. You speak in another language. So I said, okay. So I went home. I had read a book previously by Pat Boone. It was called A New Song. And it told the story of their entire family, all four of his daughters and his wife, and he all becoming filled with the Holy Spirit. And it happened to each one of them in a different way. And for Pat, the way that he tells in the book a new song is that he asked the Holy Spirit to baptize, I mean, he asked Jesus to baptize him in the Holy Spirit, and he began to sing in another language. For others, it was um, something entirely different. Um, so I knelt beside my bed. I said, I named every sin that I'd ever committed <laughs> and said, Jesus, forgive me. And then I said, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And nothing came out. Well, that's because I didn't say anything. <laughs> so, uh, so I started singing. And I sang, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. But still wasn't singing in tongues. So I finally real, remembered what my teacher or the sponsor of the Youth for Christ Club had said was that we need to, it says in Acts chapter says, they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they had control over that. You know, they had to begin. So that whatever that sound was, I mean, I'm sure they were probably, you know, hearing words and going, what is that? So they began to get in alignment with that and began to speak. So I did that, and I just gave my voice, and I said, ah, uh, and it just made a sound, ah. Uh. Now, that's not a tongue, but all of a sudden, that was the step of faith that the Holy Spirit then began to speak through me. Now, I didn't get very many words. I got a few words, and I, I didn't even think it was a language. And so, but it was what it was. So the next day was a Saturday, and I was at a, a conference about Bible mem memorization. I couldn't tell you a thing that they said because I sat there the entire time, and, you know, the devil hates it when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. And so all day long I was hearing what you did was gross. That's not really a language. It, it, that, that's not of God. Blah, 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 blah. All of this stuff, you know, all day long. And then I'm 17 years old, and a woman asked to ride back to the town where we lived. And I didn't know her from Adam, but I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll give her a ride. And the entire way, it was an hour drive, entire way, Speaking in tongues is not for today. Da, da, da. I mean, I was just getting this all day long. Now for an hour on the car ride, I mean, and I didn't even bring it up. I didn't tell her I'd been filled with the Spirit the night before and I'd spoken in tongues. I didn't say that. She brought it up. It's like, Ugh. so the next day, I saw my sponsor at church, and I said, um, I prayed and I got got my language well I, I don't think it's a language I you know I just had a few words and you know it didn't really sound like a language and she said she, God gave her a word of wisdom I, that's exactly what it was she says you know a baby doesn't learn to speak in full sentences they get mama dad da. she says you be faithful to speak what you have and then in time you will grow. And so I did that. For the next seven days, I began speaking in the spirit. Uh, and on the seventh day, all of a sudden, boom, it broke. And 
I was off. I, who, know, who knows what language it was, but I was fluent. <laughs> I went from you know a couple of words to being fluent. So for those of you that are watching right now and might be saying, gosh, I'm, uh, I would like to do that, but and maybe you've even said a word or two, but you thought, no, that's, that's not God. That's not really. It is. Just be faithful to speak what he gives you to speak. And... Um, and in just, you know, who knows, 40 years from now, you may be saying, wow, I'm so glad that I began to do that because love is flowing out of me. I feel cleansed. I've prayed for this and that changed. The atmosphere changed in our home. The atmosphere changed in the, in the, in the hospital where our grandson was at. <sighs> Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Now let's sing with that melody. Let's sing in our spiritual language. place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit we're so grateful for your presence we're so grateful that you change and you charge the atmosphere. We're so grateful that we get to partner with you to see God's kingdom come. His will be done right here, right now. And we pray this from our position in Christ. Amen and amen. 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 So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. For those of you who are watching at home, we're going to put up on the screen for you um, ways if you want to sow into this ministry of the gathering place in Simi Valley, there's a way to do that. That's how I give is uh, online through text messaging. Or if you're, uh, there's a, actually I think there's a tab or something on the screen if you want to do it that way, or you can text message. Um, there's any, any number of ways <laughs> to do that. Um, and you know, I, I said, as I told my grandson that after Jesus was baptized, the heavens were open to him and they were open to the point where he knew to tell Peter, go fishing. And the first fish that you take, there's going to be a coin in there that will pay your taxes and mine. Go do that. And as we began to our walk with the Holy Spirit, as we've been baptized him, and we're, we're going to get direction on how to do all of this. 
and stuff. So, and it'll affect everything. It'll affect your finances. It will affect your relationships. It will affect your love walk. It will affect your love of the word. It will affect your love of Jesus and your love of the Father. So, those of you that are here, if you want to... Um, make out your checks to either the gathering place or soaring ministries which is bob's uh, ministry and then go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll get the baskets to pass around but before we do that um, let's just pray together lord we're grateful for your your righteousness jesus you came and you were you who knew no sin were made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so now, Lord, we give our tithes and our offerings in that righteousness right now. And Lord, we declare that as we plant the seed, the harvest comes because we're giving to the Lord of the harvest. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord of the harvest, for multiplying back. Lord, we thank you that the seeds that were sown tonight about the Holy Spirit, that those will reap a harvest as well. And, Lord, that will affect everything, finances, family, relationships, love, our spiritual walk, all of those. We declare that now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And for those of you watching at home, we will be back on Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. And you can go right to the same place as tonight, thegatheringseeme.com. And we look forward to seeing you then. So thanks so much and so long for now.